Hey, good evening and welcome into The Rush. Adam Yanks at the controls with my friend Chuck Garfine. I'm David Kaplan. Our Chuck, how are you, kid? I'm good. I'm here on the south side uh, at Old Comiskey Park, reliving my uh, youth. You see the, the old scoreboard behind me? I do. Yeah, yeah. Where's the, where's where? the, oh, you didn't bring the Cubs like Ivy over until the new park. No. Oh, God. We have, no, but we, um, we had oh I had so many times so many great times in this ballpark my my childhood was was here I remember I sat uh, hold on a second I sat right over around here the day after the Sox won the division in 1983 went there with my dad and Mike Squires walked on the roof over here and planted the 1983 division title flag right there on the roof he literally walked on the roof before a game. And can you tell me who scored what they called the golden run to clinch that division? I think it was the golden ring or run. Yeah, I don't know if it was Don Drysdale or no, Hawk said it. Uh, it was Julio Cruz on the yeah. uh, sack fly by uh, Harold Baines against the Seattle And, Runners and how does Julio Cruz sign every autograph? Because I have one. I don't know. Julio Cruz, happiness always. <laughs> That's awesome. Pretty cool. I didn't know that. That's good. Awesome. Yeah, I can uh, I can do an I can do an hour long rush on my own talking about the 1983 White Sox, but I don't want to bore everybody. So we should move well, on. You wouldn't bore my brother, who usually watches the rush. He is a diehard White Sox yes, fan. Yes. We were vendors in 1983. There. Wow. Yeah, You're I think old. you were the one that stiffed us. You didn't tip us. Yeah, the uh, young child known as Chuck Garfine had no money. So uh, that's why I didn't, I didn't tip you. That's it. <laughs> All right, did Boomer Esiason break Matt Nagy's firing news? Not really, because we've all been saying that he already knows. Ian Rappaport said it, but Boomer tweeted this morning and said on his WFAN radio show in New York, Matt Nagy's already been informed that he's out. Matt denied that today at his press conference. Well, what's he going to say? Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's going to put on a brave face for a few more days. And then, I don't know, Jim Harbaugh. I mean, you had some news on this. I saw that you're you're hearing that Harbaugh could be, he should be on the list for the Bears. What are you hearing? I'm hearing he's definitely in play. I know for a fact they have approached him in the past. And he said no when he left San Francisco and then went to Michigan. The Bears had talked to him. And... What I'm hearing is he's definitely considering going to the NFL. Not a done deal, but the Bears would be on that list of teams that would have interest. All right. So is Ryan Pace going to be the GM? It does not sound like Ryan's going anywhere. But if Ryan wasn't going anywhere, unless they were so averse to having Matt fired during the season why would you not be doing interviews already and there's no way you're doing interviews behind Matt's back that would be disrespectful and low class or behind Ryan Pace's back <laughs> uh well unless Ryan already knows he's out that's a different story very interesting very um, interesting yeah uh, if I said to you the new coach is Jim Harbaugh you happy not happy. Uh, there's a lot of pushback from people that don't want him. And I went back and looked at his record as the 49ers coach. 41, 19, and 1. And a Super Bowl and three NFC title games. Pretty damn good. But here's my question. Who's more to blame for where the Bears are right now? Matt Nagy or Ryan Pace? We did this on the radio today. Oh. I believe that it's Matt Nagy because I think there's more talent on the roster than maybe people want to admit. That's not to say Ryan's done a great job. What letter grade would you give Ryan Pace? For what? Where he's at right now? For his seven years. D. I gave him a C minus. Yeah. And I said yeah. I would fire him. Yeah. I mean, I would fire him too. What are we doing here? Chicago Bears. He was brought in here to get this team in the right direction. He's messed up by quarterback. He's been lucky with Justin Fields getting him, but he still is only a rookie. Are the Bears a better team now than they were when he got hired? Oh, markedly. 
Markedly. Markedly. That roster is markedly better. Okay, so you think with a, with a better coach, they make the playoffs this year? Uh, I think there's a chance, yes. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, obviously you have a rookie quarterback, so it's, you know, a little bit of a leash there because, you know, it's tough to get a rookie quarterback to the playoffs. But I don't know. I mean, well, I, I'm cleaning house. That's just me. Yeah, I would I would also clean house. Yeah. No question. Um, Michael Huff says, yes, with a better coach, Chuck, we are in the playoffs. Austin says, I give Pace a C-. minus. Dan Hennessy says, no draft picks, cheap, horrible management. Dan, that's such a bad take. They're not cheap. They don't know who they're spending on, but stop with that. They're cheap. They gave Khalil Mack the biggest defensive contract yeah. in the history of the sport at the time he signed it. They spent $92 million on Julius Peppers. Hey, you want to go do this? Spend it. You want to build a $100 million building? Spend it. Stop. Dan, you're better than that. They're not cheap. They're just not good. There's a difference. Willie Glow says Chicago Bears will be in the playoffs next year. Um, let's see. Brett Phillips says Iowa loves Chuck's hair. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. I got it, Brett. Nice. You can get that too at Restore. Uh, ben Woods. Sorry, Chuck. Couldn't resist. Uh, ben wants to know, Chuck, do you use conditioner on your hair? What's going on here? Uh, I do, but here's the key. I only wash my hair once a week, maybe twice. That's it. Don't overwash your hair. I wash my head every day. I well, just you should. Hair. <laughs> That's it. Um, Chris Kristiniak said Harbaugh did very well when he had Kaepernick. Clyde Norwood Jr., Gary Indiana says, what's up, guys? What are your feelings on the White Sox and the Cubs, respectively, after the lock ins We'll get to that, Clyde. Um, let's see. Sean Mason, what about getting Jim McMahon to coach the team? That's funny. Uh, Kevin Zagman, how your Rex Ryan make it more comical? That would not be fun. Um, uh, let's see. Mm, Wayne Sawa says, I say clean house, but no matter what, it will always be a gamble to try and win again. Unless you hire someone proven. What have I said to you? All of a sudden, you can go to get Sean Payton. You could get Mike Tomlin. You could get John Harbaugh. I'd take one of those dudes. Give me a GM. Give me a whatever, president. Give me a coach who's been there done that give them the keys get out of the get way of the get out of the way let's win some freaking super bowls i'm sick yeah, of i want i want a, a theo type coming to the, yeah, to the like this is like, what are, i can't do this I, I come on the rush like every other week and a bears question comes my way or our way and i just i i don't want to do it again Jeffrey Gomez says, why does everyone want Sean Payton? I don't think he's such a great coach. Look at all the teams he's had. Just one Super Bowl. What's your opinion, Jeffrey? He's going to go to probably to the Hall of Fame. He's a great football coach. Great. It's hard to win the Super Bowl. Very, very hard. Uh, Darius Hammonds, do you guys think playing Justin Fields in the last game would be a big mistake? If he gets hurt, Yes. Uh, I wouldn't play him personally. I don't think there's that much to be gained, but other people want to play him. So just keep him healthy. Uh, I wouldn't do it, but again, they're going to. Play him, you know, just play him. Yeah. I, I, yeah. He, if he gets hurt, sure. He can get hurt next season in the first game or the second game. Yeah, there is something to be gained and learned. He's played how many games this season? 10? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't even say, think that. Say it's nine. Say it's nine. Adding one more game is, you know, look at the percentage of the amount. I mean, he, there's, it's a 17 game season. He needs the experience. One game is a massive piece of development for him. So he needs to play. He needs to play in a system he's not going to be in next year. Uh, not for me. Oh, I hear you saying. That's a good. No, that's a good point. There you <laughs> that's go. a good point. Uh, let's see. Alan Garcia says, hire Ryan Day. I love Ryan Day. He's not getting the job, and he just hired away the uh, defensive coordinator from Oklahoma State. There's no way that guy packed up his family, quit a good job at Oklahoma State, and moved 
to Columbus. And then Ryan says, hey, thanks for coming. I'm out. See ya. No shit. Cap, are we, at, after all is said and done, are we just going to have another, like the next Matt Nagy be the head coach? Ryan That's K-Space. what I'm afraid of. And then in five years, four years, we're going to be sitting here and calling these two guys boobs and find out, oh, maybe they weren't so bad when they get another job somewhere. I don't have any anything left in me to share. Unless you really want me to go on a freaking rant that's going to just blow up the rush. We, Robert, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want to hear this. We don't want Robert this. Hugger says, no trust in ownership to do the right thing. GM or coaching, don't get your hopes up. All right, let's go to topic. Robert, I agree with you 100%. I do too. Topic two, DeMar DeRozan snubbed on the Easter Conference Player of the Month Award. How on earth did Joel Embiid edge him out? Well, we got to remember something. The second of the back-to-back game winners was in January. It was not in December. Joel Embiid had a great month too, as did DeRozan. Outstanding player. Just keep playing, man. Who cares about player of the month honors? Yeah, you'll forget about it in like an hour or hopefully already. Uh, Embiid, here's the thing. Joel Embiid had a big month. Yes, his team was not perfect like DeRozan's Bulls were in the month, but DeRozan missed, what, six games, five games? That has has to play into it. Embiid had great numbers. Um, in the end, I don't give a crap. DeRozan led them to an eight and nothing. Eight. I'd rather have an eight and no Bulls record than DeRozan winning player of the freaking month. So, yeah, agreed. And he missed, yeah. as you said, five or six games. Mr. Inglewood 77 says, Shout out to my man, Cap, please rest in peace, Jeff Dickerson, JD, who was buried, laid to rest yesterday. Very, very sad stuff. Um, Let's see. Uh, Chuck, do you have a Bears watching hangover? Are you tired of watching them? That's from Ralph Daniels. Ralph, um, if this is a hangover, I went on a 30-year bender with the Bears. I'm done. Until there is massive changes, they've lost me. See, this is – I'm just te- – you guys, you guys just – you're trying to bring me in, and I just don't want to do it. I can't. I don't have anything left in me. It's just, it's pain. Okay, here, here's, here's all I'm going to say to you. You know the Bears, the Bears, the 85 Bears that we've been talking about for so long? Who had his fingerprints on all that? That would be Michael Ditka. Who hired Mike Ditka? That would be Jim Finks. Who hired Jim Finks? George Hallis. Period. There you go. There you go. I'm, that's all I'm saying. No more. Um, let's see what else we've got. Moses Reyes says, Matt Nagy, arena football genius. <laughs> uh, Michael Huff says, guys, I agree with Chuck. Bear games this season were so boring, hard to watch. Well, Ben Wood says, Chuck is not a happy man. You Ralph can, says, I'm you with can, you. The Bears could but, thread the needle. Once a year, or once it's once since 1985, they or since the Ditka era ended, they could thread the needle and maybe get some success. Lovey Smith, we saw it there with him the one year they got the Super Bowl. That's not how you have a franchise for sustained success. I'm, I can't, I can't stop. Let's move on. No more. All right, here we go. Last topic. Yeah, congratulations to one of the great leaders in the history of Chicago sports. Drake LaRoche was married. Where does the Adam LaRoche, Drake LaRoche, Clubhouse saga rank among Chicago's all-time wackiest sports stories? Oh, it's up there. I mean, you can make a movie about this. I mean, I remember being at spring training. I remember being in the clubhouse, and there's little Drake LaRoche walking around like he's a member of the team. And I'm like, this, this, uh, this is odd to me. I really hope that the team is on board with this. Because why are they on board with this if they are? And then what, what year is that? 2015 or 2012? I don't know what year it was. Rolls around. They bring Jimmy Rollins in, all these new guys. And they're like, what the actual F 
is going on with this kid and this team? Uh, and then H-E double hockey sticks uh, breaks loose. And here we are talking about Drake LaRoche, who just got married and makes us feel like we're 100 years old. Isn't that crazy? Which part? That he's married? That he's married. Yeah. What is he, 17? No, he's got to be older than that. 18? He's young. I mean, Adam Yanks, look it up, kid. How old is Drake LaRoche? He cannot be 20. Really? So Hector is asking who's Drake LaRoche? So Google. Adam LaRoche was a journeyman but solid ball player. Yeah. He brought his son with him to spring training. They gave him a uniform and let him be like a, you know, just a guy out there. And some of the veteran players, new ones especially, were furious. And then there were other players that said he's more of a leader than most anyone else right. in the so room. That was Adam Eaton who misspoke. He should not have said that. But yeah. By the way, like, Drake LaRoche is 19. He's 19. He's 19. Get married young, Drake LaRoche. Did he have to? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, congrats to the LaRoche family. Uh, you, he will always live in infamy. On the south side. Uh, there's a movie there. I don't know who would want to watch it. Well, I mean, you could make, it would be entertaining. I don't think Sox fans would watch it. Wow. Crazy. Uh, let's see if we have any comments here. I'm sure we do. Drake LaRoche. Um, let's see. Ralph Daniel says it was an arranged marriage. Real <laughs> <laughs> Jr. Uh, Jimmy Johnson. Uh, let's see. Uh, soggy kids and I love the Drake LaRoche drama. Wait, is Max saying I, I'm Jimmy Johnson because of my hair? What's he talking about? I don't I know. know. I think somebody wanted Jimmy Johnson to come run the Bears. Oh. One of the comments. Sure. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, Nick D. D. Costanzo says, Cap, where do you get your jerseys framed at? I think you need a Sox great like an Ozzie Guillen framed. I've got Frank Thomas right over there. In fact, I'm not going to have anyone say I don't play, have both sides and play fairly. Right there, Chuck. Who's behind the, the weight bench? Big Frank. Okay. And who's right back there behind the cable column? Ozzie Guillen. That is correct. I got two. And I only have one Cubs jersey up. I have two White Sox. But I also have that super sweet W right there that lights up. Chuck, check this out, man. No, I don't need to see this. This is just wrong on so many levels. Look oh, God. That. Well, you know what? With that. Yeah, it's uh, you may have to turn that those lights off for the next few years. Whatever. Till you win a ring, I can show you mine. Well, actually, I can't because <laughs> right. I can't. Well, we got a ring in 05. I, that, that wasn't that far. Uh, uh, Did they far have off. rings that far back? Man. Wow. Take we're we're going there. Is that how we're going to end the rush with a little Cub Sox uh, trash talking? Exactly. Yeah, yes. that's, that's what we do. Uh, hey, Carlos Correa, sign your contract over there. Hey, uh, who do I want? <laughs> By the way, Adam Eaton might become a coach with the Joe Madden LA Angels. How about that? Pretty cool. Yeah. All right. You have a wonderful night. Best to Liz and to Shuggy, your dog. Thanks. You're the man. Appreciate it. I'm just going to go back to Comiskey Park and um, look for Julio Cruz. Yeah, you're older now. Tip your way, your vendors. I will tip my vendor. Yeah. Got it. My honor, my brothers. All right. Have a great one. There he is. That is the awesome Chuck Garfine for Chuck. Adam Yinks at the controls in charge of the rush operations on a daily basis. I'm David Kaplan. See you tomorrow. Take that.